So welcome back, everyone. In this next session, we wish to go further in looking at the book of Exodus and the lessons that it has for us about Moses and the book of Exodus and the lessons that we also find there and the principles that can be applied in our own lives and churches and world today. I see that there are five major developments in the book of Exodus. Firstly, in Exodus chapter 1, there is freedom from slavery in Egypt. And this is a major theme that we can think about today personally. That is, in your life and in my life, there can be slavery to sin, slavery to problems that we want to be free from. As a group and as a community, there are also areas that we might want to be free from. And here we see a nation too that wants to be free. But we are free from certain things. What are we free from? We're free from sin. We're free from oppression. We're free from doubt. We're free from fear. We're free from certain things. We're also free to or towards certain things. We're free towards hope. We're free towards a better life. We're free towards flourishing. We're particularly free towards life and life abundant, as Jesus uh, said. We're free towards the better life. We're free towards the better community. We're free towards the better nation that God is calling us towards. And so in Exodus 1, we read about this journey of Moses taking the people from slavery in Egypt towards the better life. And I'm reminded in your life and mine that we can preach and teach on this journey from slavery and from difficulties towards the better life that God is calling us towards and God is calling us to. And that makes a great and valuable message that we can speak about. Secondly, there is the message of the calling of Moses and leadership in chapter 3. And in your life and mine, there are times when God speaks and God calls you and God says, I'm calling you Babu, I'm calling you Phoebe, I'm calling you Trisha, I'm calling you Rebecca, I'm calling you Ishmael, I'm calling you Paul, I'm calling you Enosh, I'm calling you to be a minister, I'm calling you to be a leader, I'm calling you to lead people towards God's better world, God's hope and God's purposes. And so Exodus 3, I think, is very important and valuable for us and well worth spending some time reading. Let's turn now to Exodus 3, where we can learn some lessons about uh, the call of God towards the better purposes that God has for us and through us for others as well as we are called into all that God has called us to. In Exodus 3, we read that Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Often God will speak to you as you are working hard, being faithful, doing that which God has called you to do. I think also it is important to network Jethro, his father-in-law, was speaking and helping Moses, but it's also important to spend time in prayer and worship seeking God and asking God, what are you calling us to and what are you saying? And then an angel of the Lord appeared. God can appear in many ways to us. He can appear through the Bible, through his word, through preaching, through others, um, a messenger, through an angel. And he can also appear through uh, as we look around at the natural world. And Moses saw a bush that was not burning off and he sensed God was speaking to him. And then he sensed God was saying to him, um, Moses, Moses. 
When you're in a church service or when you're at a conference, you may hear God saying to you, um, Phoebe or Rebel or Powell or Babu or Enosh or Trisha, you may, or Ishmael, you may hear God saying to you, I am calling you. I have a purpose for you. I want you to go here so God can call you. And then Moses responded and said, here am I. Here I am. One of the best responses that we can make is uh, the response to uh, say that we are here and available. And then um, the Lord said, um, firstly, um, this is a holy place. This is holy ground. I think one of the things that it's important to be reminded about is that God has high purposes holy purposes, good purposes. An excellent starting point is to start with the holiness of God. Start with recognition that God is holy, that God is good, that God is perfect, and remind yourself that God's ways are so good and holy and perfect we don't want to depart from them. Too often, it's too easy to water down or decrease God's goodness and holiness and then settle for second best. We want the very best. And then God said to Moses, I'm the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is the God who has moved in previous times. He could say to us also that he's the God of Martin Luther and Wesley and Calvin and pastors and apostles we've known. He is the God of others. And we come from a tradition. And uh, we could say um, he is the God of uh, the traditions. Can we just ask which tradition do you each one come from? And you could write this in chat as well. Can I get you to write in the chat what tradition do you come from? Uh, my name is Dr. Sam, and uh, the tradition I came from was originally Anglican or the Episcopal um, tradition, so I have been partly that. And then I was married in a Presbyterian uh, church, um, which is a Calvin, um, John Calvin type uh, church and uh, Presbyterian. And um, then I've also attended Wesley and Methodist uh, churches. Um, so there's been many different churches that uh, I have been a part of and Baptist churches and charismatic churches. Which traditions are you a part of? Uh, Rebecca, which tradition do you identify with? So I'm an independent I'm not an independent. <laughs> that is, and I guess there is something valuable in independent is that independent are free. Um, they're like Moses. They've left the captivity of the other and they are independent. So that is good. Ismail, what tradition are you a part of, Ismail? Anglican. I am now Anglican. Uh, which one, sorry? Anglican, Anglican. Anglican, yes. I, I, uh, my grandfather was a minister in Anglican, and I was raised in Anglican, so I've been a uh, very much a part of Anglican. So that is a great um, uh, tradition. Um, and uh, Babu, what tradition? Sir Nazarene, Nazarene. Nazarene, that is a great yeah. tradition. I have had, um, um, I have done a lot of work with Nazarene. I, I've done much work with Nazarene. Powell, what tradition? I'm independent, so. Independent. So another, like Moses, moving away and into the freedom. Enosh, what tradition? Independent. Another Moses independent. And um, Phoebe and Tricia, what traditions? 
Yes, sir. I am indeed depend. So you see, yeah. Teresa is, I think, back to this. Um, yes, very good. And um, uh, yeah, these are all important traditions. Um, and just as we read here about um, Moses, God revealed that he was with these different traditions like Nazarene and Anglican, and he's with the independent leaders. And then he reveals that he's with Moses. And so Moses recognized that he was in a tradition, the tradition of Abraham, the tradition of Isaac, the tradition of Jacob. And so I think it's important to be aware of our tradition and be aware of our leaders. Um, and at the same time, Spend time with God. Hear God speaking to you. Verse 7, I have seen the misery of my people. God is a God who ministers, and he'll often call you and I to be part of ministry. And there can be many different types of ministry. There can be ministry that is organizational, and you could be an organizational pastor. There can be ministry that is worship and singing. There can be ministry that is prayer. There can be ministry that is preaching. There can be ministry that is teaching. There can be ministry that is practical help. There can be counseling. There can be many types of ministry. But here, the ministry often meets the needs of people. And the need here was people were in captivity to the Pharaoh and Moses had to lead them out. This is a big challenge to lead people out. God said he too sees hurting people and needy people and he too wants to lead them out. And he too can help rescue people and bring them out of captivity into a promised land. That's what ministry does. Ministry sees people trapped in sin. Ministry sees people who are hurting. Ministry sees people who are sad and brings them into joy. People sees, uh, ministry sees people who are broken and brings them into healing. And that's what Moses was called to do, to bring them into a good and spacious land, a flourishing land. And that's what ministry is calling the people to do. Moses said, who am I? And you and I may feel inadequate or weak. We may feel we don't have enough training. We may feel we don't know enough. But it's not, we're just vessels. We're a plate. It's what's carried God and Jesus and Holy Spirit that's important. And so we mainly just carry the people and help the people. And so um, uh, we can help in this. Um, uh, ministry, and we can bring people into vitality and life. And so um, we might want to think, um, uh, how could they uh, um, come into life? It's through preaching, it's through prayer, it's through sharing, it's uh, through encouragement, it's through bringing um, them into the vitality and hope that they have that we can minister and bring them into life and life abundantly. And so we could pray and think, what ministry is God calling in, you into? Partly you'll feel that on your life. You'll feel that sense of burden, that sense of ability. There's five or six things that can help guide you towards the ministry that God is calling you towards. And uh, these include those uh, areas of uh, calling and purpose that God uh, has that he's guiding you uh, towards. And uh, you might want to think, is there a burden? Is there a um, calling? Is there a sense in which uh, God is motivating or giving a desire uh, motivating or giving a desire. There may also be a, a sense of need, a sense in which people say people need help in this area. Uh, there could be a sense of hurt that you're able to respond uh, to. There could also be the wisdom 
through others where other pastors say this is an area um, there could also be an opportunity. So all of these can point towards what God is calling you to. There can also be skills that you have, abilities that you have, and there are also training that you can do that can equip you. Just as Moses had been equipped and called and trained and prepared, God too could be uh, equipping and training and preparing uh, you as you uh, move into all that God is calling you to. So I pray that God guides you and calls you and leads you into each of these areas that he is calling uh, you to as he calls you like Moses into an area of ministry where you can help others. Moses said to God, who am I that I should go? And we often feel inadequate. But it's not our ability, it's what God has, the answers that are in God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the answers that are in the resources that we're able to bring and help people with. And also there's the answers in the other people themselves. God's equipped them. And often we're there to be a sounding board to listen and uh, guide in that um, they will know that call of God and sense of God in their lives. God said to Moses, I am. So God is the one who is able, who has all the resources. And God said, say, the Lord God, he sent you. So they're not looking to Moses so much as looking to God. And this is his name. Uh, this is uh, God who is, the God who is powerful, the God who is wise, the God who has ability, he's equipped. That's the God who's calling you. That's the God who's calling me. And that's the God who's ministering to people through us. And I think it's a great delight to be used by God to guide people into the new life and abundance that God is calling them to. And in many ways, it's between them and God, and we're guiding them to God, and we're guiding them to be open to the revelation that God has towards them. Of course, things don't go that well. Pharaoh does not want to let them go. God shows Moses that he's with him, that he's leading him, and he does miracles in Moses' life, which is very encouraging. But when he returns to Pharaoh in Egypt, Pharaoh makes things tougher and worse. And you may find that in your life and ministry, that when you feel as though God is calling you and you step out, things don't always go that well and you need faith and you need good people around you and you need to look to them as you understand um, God to be guiding you. We could read there about the plagues and each one of these addresses one of the gods of the Egyptians. And then we could read how finally God breaks through and rescues the people and they travel towards the promised land that God has called them to. And that's the next theme that we could um, uh, spend thinking about. But I want everyone to take a few moments now to write down something about what do you think God is calling you to? What do you think God is calling you to? To. That is what burden, motivation and desire has God put on your lives? What need, what hurt can you see? What wisdom has been th shown through others who've said you're good at this? What skills and abilities do you have? What opportunities do you see around? What training is God equipping you for? So take a few moments now to write down some of those things that you sense that God is calling you to and uh, God is calling you uh, towards.
As you're doing that, we'll move on as well to chapter 11, where we read that Pharaoh had been resisting God. Pharaoh had been oppressing people and hurting people and making slaves of people. And look what happens to Pharaoh's people. That is a plague comes on them and difficulties come on them and troubles come on them, which are difficult to be free from. And this reminds us that when there is bad leadership, bad problems come on the people. And when there is good leadership under Moses, deliverance and hope comes on the people as they are freed and travel towards the hope and benefits that they have. I like what Powell writes, God's calling me for ministry, to be good in preaching, uh, to preach many times. And this is seen in opportunity. This is seen in what God has shown and it's seen what other people have affirmed. As they've said, you're doing uh, what we need. Um, you are ministering in important areas. So these are some of the many ways in which we see that calling and ministry affirmed as we see in the life of Moses in this chapter um, there. So chapter 11 reminds us that bad leadership leads to bad things happening. Good leadership leads to good ministry and good benefits for the people as they know the blessing of God. In chapter 12, we have the major theme of Passover, and we could do research by going to Google Scholar and Google and looking further at Passover to get some further insights. So if we were to go to Google Scholar and to type in Google Scholar, we could look at the lessons that we could get from Passover um, in uh, Exodus and uh, the sacrifice of the lamb um, and what it means, the Passover in uh, Exodus. And uh, we could uh, see um, a lot of resources here. And then you can cite these resources and you can use these in your assignments. So you click on cite and then you color in the resource and you've got the resource that you can uh, use uh, there. Um, and so um, there's a lot of insights on uh, Passover that we could um, use. And in the last few years, um, we've got Jesus as an example of the um, Passover. So we could look at Jesus and the Passover as a valuable resource that we could read more about how um, the Passover looks forward to and points forward to Jesus and the way in which uh, Jesus is the hope that Passover looks towards and points uh, towards. Um, the word passion is often used for Passover, and the word paschal or paschal lamb, P-A-S-C-H-A-L, also refers to passing over. Um, so there's a lot that we can learn from the Passover and that we can apply in our lives as we journey from places of captivity towards places of hope that we have in God. And so there are just a few resources there. As Rebecca says, God is calling me to do ministry amongst children. And so people recognize that there's a huge need for ministry amongst children, um, both in Sunday school and also in schools and teaching. And that can include um, reading and writing and language and, spe and spelling and uh, other language subjects in Nepali and also in um, English and other languages. 
God is calling me, says Phoebe and uh, Tricia, to work among uh, youth. And so there's a real need among youth and we could become more and more equipped for these opportunities among uh, youth. So I pray and encourage you to look to God, to guide you. And to remember in these stages and steps towards what God is uh, calling uh, you to, that there can be a number of stages and steps along the way. <coughs> that is, firstly, we need to be free of the sin and fear that comes into life. So we need God to save us. We need God to cleanse us. We need God to bring holiness in our lives because the beginning of our testimony is coming to a holy God and being saved and redeemed and born again. Then we also need times when God calls us and guides us. Then we need times where the lamb and the blood is applied to carry us over and out of the captivity that we are often in towards the freedom that God is calling us towards. And then we need to go through times like baptism, where we are transformed and changed again. And finally, we will see triumph and victory. We don't get there instantly. There's a journey. And uh, there is a journey in pastoral ministry and Sunday school ministry and youth ministry. There is a journey in ministry. And the journey begins with salvation and calling. But then it goes through transitions when we face challenges. And just as Moses faced challenges, you and I could face challenges when there's no recognition, when people don't see your ministry and say, we're not going to let you go, we're not going to let you do it. You will face opposition. Moses faced opposition. And as Moses faced opposition, he learned to trust in God and he grew. And as Moses in the desert spent time where things weren't going forward, you may face time in the desert when things don't go so well. And then there are times when you need to know the sacrifice of the lamb and the pouring out of blood, when you need to know what Jesus has done and how Jesus died for you, and Jesus died to bring life to all. And so um, in knowing the Passover, every year at Easter, we remember that, then you're able to go forward. There'll be times when you'll face a massive sea, and you don't think you can go through, and you don't think you have the qualifications that are needed, but God can open the way and make a way and you're able to go through as well, as we read about here. And let's turn now to this um, passage in uh, Exodus um, 12 through to 15, as we read about the journey through as we go forward. So God is calling us. God is leading us. And as we go forward, we can face challenges along the way. So Moses consecrated the firstborn. And then when they came to the sea, he had to uh, have faith in God to lead him through. And then the Lord said to Moses um, that he would stretch out his hand and the sea would part. And then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and then the wind blew, just like the Holy Spirit can come and open up a way and make a way, and then you're able to go through the difficult time. Exodus 15 summarizes all of these uh, points when it uh, says um, Moses and the Israelites were able to celebrate time of worship in church each week on the Saturday is important when we sing to the Lord that he has hurled aside the opposition at times like he did for Moses. The Lord is our strength and our defense. The Lord God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they are our salvation and we praise him. The Lord is like a warrior. 
The Lord is his name. He's the one who's been with others who've come along this journey with us. He's turned aside the opposition and opened up a way for us. And so in greatness is his majesty, and he has turned and blasted those who've gone the wrong way, but he's also opened up a way for those who look to God. People and nations should tremble because God is holy and good, and people and nations should be aware of the holiness of God and the judgment of God because he wishes to reign. So sing to the Lord, he's highly exalted and celebrate. So this is a major prayer and worship song that reminds us of the importance of prayer and worship in our lives. Can I get everyone now to take a couple of minutes to write down what is God saying through these first couple of sessions that we have been uh, reading about? What has God said to you? What has God revealed through the class today? You could write that in the chat. What important points is God revealing? And you could write it in your own notes. So let's take a couple of minutes for you to write down what God is saying to you and what God is revealing. As Powell writes, don't be afraid, I am with you. So that's a very encouraging word that comes through Exodus, through Moses, that as God leads, don't be afraid, have confidence, have courage. Now, of course, we also need wisdom. We also need instruction. We also need other good people that we talk to, trust in, listen to, and who guide us as we go forward as well. So don't be afraid. I am with you. I think that's an excellent point, Powell. Don't be afraid. God is with us as um, and he gives us his word. He gives us the Bible. He gives us other people to help us, to accompany us, to journey with us. He gives us truth. As Phoebe and Tricia write, God is revealing that he is the one who is with us in every circumstance, in the difficult circumstance and the good circumstances, that God hears our prayers, that he answers our prayers, that he guides us. That's terrific, Phoebe and Tricia. Thank you. That is really good. In Exodus 16, we're reminded that God provides and there can be difficult times when you don't have much to eat. I know in ministry there have been times when my wife and I have not had much food in the pantry and we have had to struggle with a little bit of food in ministry. But God provides and in Exodus 16, God provides. Um, miracles can happen, even this last few weeks. Um, uh, people gave us something we needed and it was very helpful. So God provides. In Exodus 17, God, um, Moses strikes the rock, water comes, and I'm reminded that God refreshes and renews like water refreshes and renews. God cleanses like water cleanses. Exodus 17. Exodus 18, Jethro visits Moses and uh, Jethro is delighted to hear about all the good things and he praises uh, God and he says he knows that God is uh, great. 
And then Moses says, the people come to me and seek God's uh, will. And Martha, uh, Moses' father-in-law says, what you're doing is not good. There's too heavy a burden that you take on. So we need to be careful that we don't take on too many burdens, but we are still refreshed. So don't do too much. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? To don't do too much. I think that's an interesting uh, message. Don't um, do too much. Take time to rest. Uh, sleep. <laughs> Eight hours a day. You need sleep. Uh, rest. Have a Sabbath rest. Exercise. Uh, eat well, uh, drink well, um, have water. Um, so, so often we can spend too much time doing too much ministry. We can burn ourselves out. So don't burn yourself out. I think there's almost more danger in burning yourself out than not doing enough. There are times when you must put in a lot of time. And uh, I know in that which I do, there are times where you've really got to put in the extra. But there are times when you should not um, put in too much time. Ismail writes about how the message is that God never forgets us in the midst of hurt and suffering in our lives or other people's lives. God is aware. God is attentive and he provides the answers. Thank you, Ismail. That's really good. Babu writes, God is with me in troubles and sufferings. And he said, do not be discouraged. So God is with us. So that's terrific, Babu. And uh, I think uh, you've encouraged me today, Babu. Your faith and your encouragement, I think, is a great encouragement to us all. So thank you for that. And thank you for each one, because each one of you has encouraged me today by your faith, by being here, by training and studying. Um, there's real blessing. So in chapter 18, verse 17, Moses' father-in-law says, um, what you're doing when you try to do too much is not good. You carry too heavy a burden. Listen, have other people who help you and work with you. Train up other people. Select other people, trustworthy people who hate dishonest gain. Appoint them as officials. Appoint them um, to work with you. Disciple them. Equip them. Minister with them and to them so that they might be effective and that you might be more effective. And then we come to Exodus 19 in which uh, the, um, at the uh, Mount Sinai, we have the um, revelation of God. So this is a new section that we're coming to where God reveals um, himself in a new and special way, and we need to be um, ready um, for this uh, revelation in Exodus 19. So if we go um, down through the notes, um, we see here um, there's lots of notes that we have. Um, so let me just uh, move down through some of uh, them. So we're reminded God carries us through the waters, through the difficult times. He goes uh, before us. Um, so that's really encouraging what we uh, read there. God is uh, providing for all we need. So when we don't have uh, so much. So all of this is in the notes if you want to go back over them. And then when we uh, come to... Um, uh, Exodus 19, this is a very new section. So I think uh, this is an important uh, section. Um, let's take a break for about five minutes and then we'll come back after the break and I uh, will stop the recording now and then we'll have a break for five minutes and come back. 
and then um, during the break, um, you can have a break, walk around and come back. You could write a few notes down as well. I'll see you all in five minutes. Thank you.